Are you stuck? How about unhappy? Join Elena Chapman, author, mentor, and life coach for Magical Moments with Elena as she challenges you to get out of the doldrum and start living your life to the fullest. In just 60 minutes, Elena will help you take control of your life and push you to do the things you never thought you'd do. So get ready to take back your power and celebrate life with Magical Moments featuring Elena Chapman. Welcome to Magical Moments, and I'm your host, Elena Chapman, and we are going to have so much ease and betterment for you, these nuggets and these wonderful things today. I'm very, very excited about today. But I did want to bring up something to start this off, because when I was driving in today, I was sitting and I was listening to this wonderful music, and it brought me back, and I don't know why, and I thought, My gosh, that was the first time I really understood how powerful I am. And I thought, you know, I got to tell people this story because, okay, it was probably the very worst day of my life. It was the first time in my life that I felt hopeless almost hopeless because the everything was crashing down and my family was going through a lot um at that time we we were i don't know we were just we were suffering from attacks of some sort and i won't go into all the yucky stuff but it was so much so much at once i just and i'm a strong strong person but i'll tell you what that day was awful And so when things get awful, I get into my car. (laughs) I love driving. You know that. I told you that before. I love that feeling of moving and not doing anything. (laughs) Voila, that's the car. So I get into the car and I drive. And I'm just putting on music in that car and I'm letting it drive me. And that car took me out into a smaller town away from mine a town I had lived in for a few years. I had worked there. And down onto this road, down further than I had ever been, I just let it go. on, And it came upon, this is how the universe works, guys. This is how God works. I came upon these uh, fence that's made out of stones. Now, if you know anything about me, I love, love, love stone fences. I love that rustic feel, that comfort, the trees. And here was a hill with this fence stone that went up the hill with all these beautiful trees that were overlapping the road. Now, there's, I, I'm thinking this is a gift from heaven. How did, you know, I'm, I'm, thanking, I'm thanking God for this incredible relief. And so up I go, and I find out it's an old monastery, now a convent. And there was a clearing that looked over the town that was all like, uh, you know, lots of old, old, old trees. It was beautiful, very wooded. But this, there, there was a little clearing. So I got out of my car and I went to the clearing. And still, I was not feeling like myself. In fact, I I was scared. So I sat down on the ground over this clearing, and I just closed my eyes. And I I was just saying, what in the heck do I do? And when I closed my eyes and I got really quiet and I just allowed myself, kind of like going into a meditation, semi meditation, all of a sudden, I felt like the trees were leaning in. There was a slight breeze that all of a sudden picked up. And I felt, I'm honest, honest, I'm not kidding, and I'm not making this stuff up. I felt the trees leaning in on me. And I thought that was so weird that I opened my eyes to look. And then above me, I heard this hawk. And this hawk is circling right above me, not going anywhere else, right above me. And when I looked down at the ground, all, this is what's really fascinating, all around me, there are these little insects, but they're going around me clockwise. 
it's like a little parade, a parade of insects going around me, but none of them getting on me. And that's when it hit me. Oh my gosh, I'm not alone. I don't have to face this struggle alone. I don't have to come up with all the answers by myself. I am not alone. They say that God is omnipresent, that source, whatever you like to call God, I call God my beloved. My beloved is omnipresent and comes alive in everything. Every leaf on the tree, every blade of grass, every drop of water, every breath we breathe. We are not alone. And because of that, we are bigger and more powerful in love than we could ever, ever understand. So I don't know why that story came to me this today. I feel like there is somebody out there who needs to hear that. And, and because it came to me like a shot when I was listening to my music. And I thought, you know what? You got to know it. You have so much surrounding you in every breath you breathe. Find a place, close your eyes and feel it. And no, you are not alone, my dear. You are not alone. That brings me to our incredible guest. I'm very excited. She has a really cool Southern accent. And I just love Southern accents. So we're going to have fun today. Her name is Tara, Dr. Tara Raul Jenkins. She's an ED. Ed D is a creative communicator of God's word. Isn't that apropos <laughs> for this today? Her message often infused spoken word, music, and dance. Of course it does. Utilizing secular cultural references to explain scriptural principles. She is a graduate of Clark Atlanta University with a Bachelor of Arts in Mass Media Arts, Moody Bible Institute with a Master's of Arts in Biblical Studies, and Southern Baptist Theologian Seminary with a Doctorate in Education and Leadership. My, 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 look at that. She is a go-getter, and but she has a big heart and she understands. Tara, Tara sorry, enjoys convening faith-lifting events. She's also the founder of ministrymates.org, an organization that equips ministers and pastors' wives for ministry. She resides with her husband, Charles, and her three wonderful children. So today, Tara, I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you so much, Elena. I, I am so happy to have you on. Part of this magical moment with you. <laughs> I'm so glad you are here. All right. So, you know, I'm talking about how we are never alone and and the power we have inside of ourselves. And for you, you're talking about that we are enough. So would you talk about how that is similar or not similar? It is absolutely similar. We are spreading the same message of enoughness. So often we gather what we consider our enoughness based on others, and we have not discovered who we already are, independent of what other people may or may not think about us. And so this journey to enoughness, it's about discovering who you already are based on what and who you were created to be. Yes. And you know, we did at one time know who we are. There was a sign. I think they're doing a lot of science on, on the soul. I watched this documentary on the soul. I just loved it. It's a wonderful. I'll send it to you if you like. And there, I would love that. Oh yeah. It, and there is an educator scientist slash scientist. And I did forget her name, but she is, she's studying children and she says, and it's true. She says they are, 
complete within themselves. The personalities, the likes, the dislikes, the total connection. They see things we don't see. They're, they're totally connect, connected to the divine. They're totally connected to this other place that we all have come from. However, it's when those children suddenly realize their place in this world, who they're supposed to be in this world, what they're supposed to attain in this world, like school or the yes and no of their parents, when they become totally engrossed in what we expect of them, they lose it. Interesting. Absolutely. That's exactly where my journey talks about the beginning. Uh, when I talk about enoughness, I like to think about it in six stages. And the first stage of enoughness, of this journey to enoughness, is realizing when you were told or when you were treated as if you were not enough or you would never be enough. And a lot of those first experiences happen in our families or happen in some sports structure when the team is being picked and you're the last one of when you are the shortest before you're the tallest <laughs> or the strongest. Or uh, in that school setting, I, I tell a story of first grade, and I remember being the only person that looked the way that I looked in my first uh -huh. grade class. But I always felt like I was dressed so cute because my first grade teacher would say, look at what you have on today. And she would let me march around the school with her. And she would oh. tell everywhere, everyone, everywhere she went at every little classroom, look at this, what she has on today. And I distinctly remember uh, one morning my mom had laid out a peach little polo shirt and it just had a simple one little flower on it. And I looked at it and I said, Mrs. Stanley is not going to say I look cute today. Oh. And at first grade, I had already decided that I needed the validation of my teacher yes. in order to feel like I was enough. Isn't that so something? We have to trace our steps back and trace the sounds that we heard and discover who did we give the power to, to validate or invalidate our feelings. Of it is. It's very true. And sometimes we don't, it's not even a positive thing. You know, it was funny because when I was a kid, you know, um, well, I grew up with the nuns and I remember everything was like line up and you had to think fast. They throw an answer at you. You know, we'd have to be two lines. And if you couldn't say it, you couldn't give the answer, you'd have to sit down. Do you know, I can't think like that. I can't, that's not how I think, especially at that age. And, and also I had a, a little bit of dyslexia. So really you're asking me to like speed dial when I don't speed dial. So I'm yeah. sitting in that line. And when I went up there every day, every day, I would be the first one sitting down. And that so is amazing. isn't that and something? How old were you at that point? When I was in third grade. Memory? third grade wow. and well, and so that way but you know it was funny that could have defined me I could have said oh my gosh I'm a failure but I'll tell you my dad was there my dad somehow he knew and he said you know what I'm going to teach you how to study and that changed wow. everything but it is funny I could have and was quickly becoming that girl who didn't know anything do you see? Wow. Just because of the situation I was put in. Yes. And so often we don't even realize what that moment was. And so I'm hoping that your, your listeners, your audience, they have a moment, an aha moment right now where, where they remember what they forgot. Because sometimes you forgot what you forgot. Like, I don't. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. Don't, I don't. You know, some people, you have to take a moment of reflection and trace those sounds, as I said. So, where did I first hear this that I wasn't? Where yeah. did I first feel this that I wasn't? Yeah. Enough? And so, when we dig, in and realize where those first moments were, then we can uproot it. And I think 
Let's talk about, let's give people like a idea, because there's a lot of people out there who do not feel like they're enough. However, they're doing well, they're making money, they have families, they have children, but they never feel like enough. And when do you, what does feeling like you are enough do for you? So when we think about enoughness, enoughness is knowing completely who you are in every moment, independent of anyone else's opinion of you that is around you. Because we will always be surrounded with different types of people who think of success differently, who define success differently. And Mm -hmm. so if we are basing our feelings of enoughness based on the people around us, it's like staying in neutral in a car. You can run out of gas in neutral and not go anywhere. Your your direction is based on the environment around you. And so feeling like you are enough is knowing who you are independent of anyone else's opinion or validation of you. And so the way I, I introduce this concept is that I have an exercise at the end of each section of Mm -hmm. my book, Enoughness. And in that exercise, I talk about the difference between labels and tags. If you were to look at uh, Mm. the garment that you're wearing, there's a tag inside that garment that's attached, that does not come out, that does not come off. And in in that tag, it says what you're made of, where you were made, and how to take care of you. But throughout our lives, we often don't live according to that tag that's in us. We live according to the labels that are put on us. Yes, And so we look at the labels that are slapped on us, the short one, the dumb one, the tall one, the firstborn the last to sit down, the first to sit down, whatever those labels are, we have to peel those labels off and not live our lives in a direction based on the labels that were put on us, but based on the tag that's in us. Who created you? You were created by a divine creator that I call God. And what are you made of? You're made of all of these talents, these gifts, this personality and how to take care of you, live according to your creation and not expectation. And, okay, so a lot of times when we get these labels, we create, we, we make them now false in ourselves. Meaning if we are called uh, bossy, and, and really those are leadership qualities, we don't honor the leadership quality. We call ourselves bossy because that's what we were called. We take on those labels that people call us and we make them our faults. And I, and I think when we also become our enoughness, we have, don't you feel that we have to embrace our faults and start to understand the gifts of them and welcome them back into us? Absolutely. And one of the stages of enoughness, uh, I talk about just enough. And so when I go through the journey of enoughness, I'm going from feeling or being told that I was never enough to knowing that I'm enough already. But in between there, the stages are never enough, had enough, enough is enough, but just enough. And just enough is about actually admitting, honoring, and exposing your inefficiencies to make room for God's sufficiency. Because it's in those areas of what you have been told that you're not, that God can show off and said, watch me use you in spite of what you're not. And so it's an exciting journey because you realize that enoughness is not a place of perfection. It's an honoring of progression that everywhere that we're not, God can still come in and use us to be his light in the world. That's, yes, I get what you're saying. And when you accept all the parts of you, that's when 
you find the light. I mean, I think when when you are looking at what is it? Uh, a Wrinkle in Time. Have you ever seen that movie? Oh my gosh, that's such a fun movie. Anyway, A Wrinkle in Time. The boys, my boys, I have three boys. They love the book. I thought Oprah was fantastic in that movie. So anyway, when they're sending the girl and she's going off into the darkness, the dark land to find her brother and her father, she, one of the, 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 the guides says, I give you the gift of your faults. And she looks at her and says... Why would you give me those? And she said, because they're going to help you in the end. And I think when we do look at our faults and we say, oh, my gosh, I am. I am enough. I, but these, these things that I've always been told is this way are truly gifts. And when we look at Absolutely. it that way, that's when our power, I think, that's when we can open to all that wonderful light that is shining through us because we're not blocking it with our with our thoughts that we are you know that we are deficient because of what people have labeled us does that make sense absolutely i often say shine and shine bright like a diamond and most of the diamonds that the people i serve have are not flawless diamonds but the way that they shine is through the different colorations and through the different flaws. Uh-huh. And the way the light hits the flaws gives even greater color and greater a definition than what could be deemed flawless. A lot of times, the biggest competition to a true diamond with its flaws and all is the cubic zirconia that has less value, but it appears flawless. But that (laughs) flawlessness is actually a false narrative. True. And so we have to accept the discoloration. We have to accept the broken pieces. Oh, sure you do. Well, those are gifts. But aren't they gifts? Yeah, and we're used greatest through our acknowledgement of our imperfections. Right. Our imperfections are our gifts. And I think mm-hmm. that when we look at them in that way, they then do shine. And, oh my gosh, they bloom. I think yes. it's in realizing our own, our own, um, it's opening ourselves. It's opening. It's opening the pathway all the way so that you can be guided. Am I yes. right? Yes. And I love that you use the word bloom because uh, I, I do an illustration of three different flowers. And when you think about your enoughness, you can't compare your bloom to the next person's bloom because no. the flowers are made completely differently. And then we can't even judge our timing of the way we bloom and the timing that we bloom because everyone does not bloom at the same time. And a lot of times our feelings of not enoughness are because the timeline that we created for our lives does not actually line up with the creator's timeline for our lives. And so we can be like, God, you're late. Bless me in this area. God, you're late. Uh, Make this life change I want. God, you're tardy. And so we have to realize that our definition of when we want what to happen may not be the creator's definition of the timeline for our lives. And we're still enough, even when things don't happen on our timeline. What was your story? I would love to see how you came to teaching this. I know you listed all of the amazing educational uh, opportunities and experiences that I had. And so before the graduation at Clark Atlanta and before the graduation at Moody Bible Institute and before the graduation at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, I failed this big English honors class I was taking in high school, and I was a very, very public person on my campus. I was that girl that was captain of the cheer squad and that girl who was vice president of the 
student body and that girl who was supposed to have the solo at the high school graduation and my big hometown of 100,000 people, <laughs> it was the <laughs> most uh, humiliating public embarrassment uh. for me to fail this English course and not be able to have a graduation, not be able to participate. Oh, in my high school that graduation. is embarrassing. Yeah, I and get that. So, right. So that happening at age 17 was really depleting because you go from being labeled that girl to feeling like that failure. Yes. And so through that being my moment of leaving my hometown and going to undergrad, uh, that, that, that uh, cloud of, of shame or who knows that this happened to me or everybody else decorating their dorm room with their graduation pictures, knowing that I would never have any. Aww. That feeling of, of, of uh, not enoughness, it, it just became fuel to keep pressing through my educational journey that it wasn't about me. It was about showing someone else that may have the same story or the same feelings of failure that you can keep on. You can keep going. You will still have magical moments ahead of you, even when you feel like you're not enough. Like that cannot be a stopping point. It can't be a period. It has to be a comma. There's more to your story than that feeling of failure. Yes. And so just pressing through, you know, people still feeling like you're not enough. That's amazing. You're listening to Magical Moments, and I'm your host, Elena Chapman, and we are talking to Tara Jenkins, and we will be right back. I'm excited to talk to her a little bit more about how the steps you can start taking to start feeling like enough. You're listening to Magical Moments with Elena Chapman, helping you find your inner purpose. Learn more online at soulmanifesto.com. Welcome back to Magical Moments, and it's for that ease and betterment. And what better ease and betterment than when you can finally say, oh, I'm enough. I am enough in all my glory. I am enough. Doesn't that feel incredible? Well, today we have Dr. Tara Jenkins, and we're going to be talking on how we can really take steps to start feeling that way. And Tara, I love your story. And I love... Now, when you were going through, you were showing others. We were just talking about how, what set you on this journey and oh my gosh my dear I understand I mean I can't imagine because I was one of those girls that yeah I, if I had failed um, a class and couldn't graduate with my group that that would have hit me hard I do remember telling the uh, math teacher that no I needed to go do my solo and on the tour and no I wasn't going to do geometry my whole life so it really didn't matter if I took that test <laughs> I love that. I wish I had had my, that enoughness at that age. Well, he um, <laughs> well, he turned quite red. He was not happy with me. Yeah, I was 17. I just didn't see the point of this. <laughs> How am I going to use this? But anyway, I could see. I could see how n n failing and not being able to graduate would be such a heavy load. But when you were talking about how you were pressing on, it was still almost to prove to others that you can do this. When did you come and you say, okay, you know what? It's, it's me inside. It's, of course I'm going to press on because why wouldn't I press on? I can do it. When did you get that feeling that you are enough? You know, it's a constant journey. And as I talked about labels and tags, peeling off the labels that other people have put on me is a daily peel. Because some uh, labels, you peel them off, but there's a little residue under it. And you're like, I think I mm. need to scrub this little area a little more. Yeah. 
because I'm still kind of seeking uh, validation in some areas. But I would say through um, moving into different cities, each time, each move, there's a little bit more of enoughness that rises up in me on my own journey. And so, as I uh, mentioned, my educational journey was in a, a small town in Tennessee of about 100,000 people. And then I immediately went to undergrad after summer school, retaking that class. And so now Good. I'm in what I thought was the biggest city of Atlanta. And so I had the, these doubts. Uh, am I only talented in a bright light in a small town? Am I still worthy to shine even in, a, in bigger settings with other people from bigger cities? And so that was another breakthrough that, yes, I'm enough wherever I am, not yes. just in my small family or not just in my small town or not just around the friends that know me. I'm still enough. And so I feel like each with each move, with each season of life, I rise up in my enoughness. And so after undergrad, I moved to Chicago for graduate school. And in, in that, I went from being at a historically black college or university uh -huh. and into a, a program where there were three people that looked like me in the entire graduate school. <laughs> so that's a big culture shift. <laughs> <laughs> another another opportunity to rise up in enoughness. So each time, with each challenge, with each new bouquet of people that I would be around, I would have to rediscover my enoughness all over again. You and do. Some of your listeners or viewers might feel that same way with so much, so much season shifting that's going on now. And, and oh, yes. Yeah. That has to take place like... Am I enough for this? Oh, yeah, I am. And so it's almost like a rediscovering of enoughness and, and a constant peeling of labels. Because each time you get into, I feel like, a new environment or meet new people, you're relabeled. <laughs> and then you have to, again, shed some of those labels and realize I'm enough whether you know it yet or not. That's exactly right. I think I think you're right. It is with each challenge. I think even in my life, I saw that too. With every challenge that I just, it, it's not even that I had to conquer it. It's that I just grew through it. And with each little growth through it, each new awareness, it gave me more of that confidence that, yes, I am enough. It's it's a, a hard thing to explain. I really feel that um, feeling enough. What does it give you? It really gives you. It gives you some of that incredible peace. And I think with that, you just have this inner feeling that you are always going to be fine. You have this inner feeling that it's all always going to be fine because you can do it. You are enough. You are here. And Absolutely. And why why wouldn't you be enough? You know? And yes, and I really had some interesting experiences in Chicago because my husband is uh was a full-time pastor for uh the last 20 years. And and we were in a setting where we entered into a 50-year-old organization, and we were age 25 <laughs> on our first official day in leadership, but there were thousands of people who were more than 75 years old. <laughs> and here comes a new breath of fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> so both of the people that we were leading yes. were old enough to be our grandparents. Yes. Have and fun. so many of them had ideas of what I should be doing. Of course. How I should be dressing. Of how course. How I should be speaking. How I should be serving. And that was another breakthrough of enoughness that I had to rise in because each of us were created with a set of gifts, a set of talents, and a personality. 
what I call a gift mix. And I, in every area of my life, have decided to do what I'm created to do, not what I'm expected to do. And I feel that living fully in your enoughness is when you do what you were created to do. And so I love dance. And so whatever uh, opportunity I have to, to share, to speak, to communicate, I'm going to infuse dance. Now, I don't know if that was what was expected of me, but I have to live my life according to creation, not expectation. And that's when that you know is, if you're living yeah, in enough, like when you're doing what you're created to do. I didn't create what things would jump on the inside of me. I didn't create what gifts would be on the inside of me. God created me. And he did not create any of us empty. He created all of us with enough of what we need to serve who we're called to serve, to do what we're created to do. You know, it is true. You cannot, if we live our life by expectation of other people, and and you know what I mean, everyone out there. You, you know expectation from our spouses. What is the perfect, perfect? <laughs> is there such a thing as perfect? No. So why no. do we try so hard to be the perfect mother, the perfect wife, the perfect person on the job, the perfect oh, dog walker, the perfect exerciser, the perfect person in yoga, the perfect person in our volunteer group, the perfect person at our job? Why? You know, whenever we put that pressure on ourselves, to be so darn perfect, you actually put a cap on your gifts. I love it. Because what you're trying to do when you say you want to be perfect, you get a list in your mind of what perfect is. And that list is created by other people. Yes. So when, and I love what Dr. Tara said, because when she said, but I have this, I have this incredible urge to dance. I have this incredible urge to just show people creation through the movement. And yet I've got all these people who are 75 (laughs) who have... And older. (laughs) I know. I taught in a lot of churches. I taught choir. So I do know what you're talking about. And they are all, they all expect this one way of worship. Now, she could have sat there and said, I have to put on my little, um, I, I am the wife of a pastor look. And I've got to be this way. And I've got to have little teas. And I've got to do this and that. But no, she stepped out and she let, she didn't try to be the perfect minister wife, but she did allow her gifts to shine. Do you see the difference? It's humongous. I remember, it's funny because I had a church like that too. And I, I went in and this church had been, um, the, everybody, there were a lot of old people in it, older people. Wonderful older people. I actually it's grew right. to love we them. Love our seniors. But I really had to get this choir into shape. Do you know? And I'll tell you, they were very traditional. And you know what we did? <laughs> I decided, okay, we're going to jazz up this. We got to get some life in here. And so I took 50s music and we changed it to all sacred text oh, I love that and so the choir came in poodle skirts and and all those shoes <laughs> and we had a whole fun 50 service and if that doesn't rock that sunday i don't know what it would. but that I was i love that i want to see that <laughs> but see that's another example of not getting stuck in what being that perfect choir director being that per oh my gosh I can't stand that word perfect Be- I know and isn't it just paralyzing like perfectionism is paralysis it just gets you stuck trying to look at somebody else for what you're supposed to do other than the person who created you yeah and what I what if you said instead of looking at something perfect why couldn't you say um, instead, what would, what do I say? 
I think what I always say when I go into something is, what, how can I breathe life into this? How can I, how can I bring the best of me into this? What am I supposed to bring here? And then I allow what comes to me, come. And if it's a mistake, so what? I learn. We can't be afraid of making a mistake. I think that's what yes. stops everyone. Oh my gosh, what happens if they don't like my 50s thing? Well, then they don't like it. Don't do it again. You know? And accept the fact that you are not for everyone. Oh right? gosh, right. For that, for that person who needed that attention getter, for that person who did not feel life in your music before. Like, what an aha moment. What an unforgettable turning point. And I just yes. love that. One, um, situation that I was in, and I was supposed to be teaching a biblical story in a church setting at at the church where we were serving, and I was like, I can't help it. When I read certain passages, it just is a musical in my mind, and it just brings ideas. (laughs) And so I was supposed to be teaching on the story of Lazarus, and Lazarus was dead and brought back to life. Right. And I just had the visual of the thriller dance that I could <laughs> take. And so the beginning of my love message it. is all of our dancers, all of my kids. At the time, it was just two girls. Now I have two girls and a boy. But we were all on stage dancing the thriller dance before I tell this story about Lazarus coming back to life. I love it. Now, I love now, that. That this is the same place that... God, how wonderful is that? I mean, that, that would wake everyone up. <laughs> right. The doors of this church is written on, ladies, no pants, please. Oh, and my gosh. I'm on stage, in pants, doing the thriller dance. And so it's just one of those things. It's like, I have this idea. I feel like I'm supposed to do it. And somebody was reached because of that uncommon expectation yes. you know that you know it's just that's doing right. what you feel like you are supposed to do in a moment it's it's allowing yourself like i said it's it's saying to yourself you know i have gifts to bring and and allowing the guidance to work through you you will always bring something forward that touches someone's heart and isn't that what we're all about You know, helping each other to evolve. I really now you talk about um, six stages of enoughness. Now, what what are some of the things that people can do? Can you give them some steps to start to accept themselves as enough? Absolutely. And so, in the six stages of enoughness, the first stage is that never enough I mentioned. And so, I want everyone listening, all of your wonderful listeners of Magical Moments, I want you to just take a moment, reflect, and write down moments when you felt like you were never enough and moments when you were told or treated as if you were never enough. And so, we know what the root is. That's stage one, that never enough stage. Stage two is had enough. And it's a moment where you write down your gifts, your talents, your strengths, and you realize had enough is a double meaning. Not just I've had enough, like it's a moment where I'm frustrated and I don't like the way I'm living my life. But had enough is past tense. You have already had everything you needed to be who you were called and created to be. It's it's like that moment of the Wizard of Oz when Dorothy realizes, oh, the power I needed, I already had all along, even though I was searching. That's right. It wasn't the magical (laughs) shoes, was it? (laughs) (laughs) Right. That's right. That's that had enough moment. And so uh, realizing what you already have is such an important moment in knowing your own enoughness. And then stage three is enough is enough. That's that moment of no turning back. It's like once you've tasted the freedom of actually being who you are, not what others expect you to be, and living your life every day according to your own gift mix, according to your own 
creation and redefining success, not by what other people said, not because your family said you need to be married at this moment, at this point, at this age, not because your family said you need to make this much or you should be whatever that it is. Each of us had that it we were told. Uh, just realizing enough is enough. I can't live anymore based on other people's expectation. I'm enough alone. And so uh, that's stage three. Stage four is the just enough. And that's that moment where I talked about we accept our imperfections and our insufficiencies. And we say, in my broken places, I'm going to list what I'm not. These are the areas that I'm not. But I can still be more than what I have been, even based on what I'm not. So I think about the orphan uh, Esther that we now know as Queen Esther. What she did not have did not stop her from becoming more of what she was. And so she was an orphan. She did not have a mother or a father, but yet she still became queen. And I have an exercise in my book about listing. Even though I didn't have this, I can still do this. And so for me, I didn't have a high school graduation, but I still had an educational journey that continued. I, I did that. not have the acceptance of people, but I still had moments where I was able to do uh, amazing things with amazing teams of people just living according to my gift mix. That's stage four. Stage five is enough already. And that double meaning again, you realize that you're enough already. You've already had what you need, but then you're enough and you're all A-L-L ready, all ready to face a giant, all ready to face a challenge, all ready to face a diagnosis, all ready. You have everything you need in you. And that last stage, six, the sixth stage is mm-hmm. enough said. Oh, and very I have cool. a list of, of scriptures that just says it's been enough said about you in scripture that can help you know who you already are. And then I invite everyone to write your own confessions, affirmations. So there's enough said. You can say every morning when you look in the mirror, I'm enough. My gifts are enough. You know, I learned from the Tao a cool exercise I'll share with everyone because it helps you to get started. When you make that list of all the things that you haven't, you have not, um, you know, that you haven't felt enough. And the Tao is, um, has a wonderful meditation where you just allow the light. You get very relaxed, you know, get into that wonderful place that you feel good, that sacred space, and allow that light to come in through your crown. And as it goes down through the spine, through the body, it will stop. It will stop wherever you don't feel like you're enough. And every time it stops, there's a story. And if you allow yourself to talk to the story then, and you, like for me, when, when it went down into that, oh, you are so bossy. When, when I hit that, and that was right by my heart, guys, right by my heart. I had a conversation with that. Why was I called that? Well, my mom used to call me that all the time because I was always organizing things. I was an organizer, believe it or not. And when I hit that, I had to, I talked to it and then I started thinking to myself, but wait a minute, that so-called bossiness is what held my family together when, when one of us was sick. And that Um. bossiness was what pulled choirs together that were were not together. That bossiness helped me to pull my life together when it was falling apart. So that's not bossiness. That's leadership. Do you see? I love that. And you can start to realize these stories. And then once you do that, you can either say goodbye to that bossiness and transform it into leadership or If you choose to stay with that bossiness or that, that's up to you. Then you go on with the light and you go to the next one. This is a really, it's a really nice, peaceful way to talk to it and just be gentle with yourself, you know? And in the gentleness, everything will be revealed. And then you can decide what you want to do with it. I love that. That is one of my most favorite exercises. I had to share it. 
But I love that too. That's like, <laughs> a lot of times I love that 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 thing that you've been called or labeled. It just needs to be reframed and reworded to be the yeah. positive aspect. And a lot of times our weaknesses are strength. Our weaknesses are our strength. Well, then, yeah, they were never weaknesses to begin with. And that's what they are the gifts. They are the gifts. So, how can people find out more about you? On Instagram, Dr. Tara Jenkins. On Facebook, Dr. Tara Jenkins. On Twitter, <laughs> Dr. Tara Jenkins. And, uh, or the, the book, you can find it on Amazon, Enoughness, The Journey to Discovering Who You Already Are. Love that. Also Love at tarajenkinsonline.com. Thank you. Love so that. Love that. Time. This conversation has enriched me. <laughs> well, it's enriched me, I'm too. Gonna, yeah, Thank I'm you gonna, so gonna much. You, you're going to send me of, of what you've taught me today. Yes. <laughs> Well, I think we taught each other. Thank you. That's a nice compliment. And for everyone out there, don't forget, there is, you know, if you like these little exercises and meditations and and just ways to do some introspection, or my gosh, guys, in this time, in this time, and is Corona ever going to (laughs) end? I want it to end now. I've had enough. I keep forgetting my mask in the car. I keep having to go back and get it. So, I mean, I'm all for the mask. I'm not against i'm not on a protest no guys i just forget and i'm just sick of it all i have to say but what do i do so that i don't go crazy so that i don't get caught up in all that negativity so that i can feel that peace inside so that i can be that wonderful shade tree that people want to sit under as um james allen said in his book as a man thinketh i do the meditations And meditation is not hard. So we have right now Soul Manifesto, that is my group. We have seven day reset to discover your inner calm. It's free. It's my service to everybody who is having that nutsy feeling in this coronavirus time or this nutsy feeling because of whatever. And I give you five, five, I think it's five to seven days of these short videos that by the time you will be meditating, and not only will you be meditating, but any time in the day when you start to feel your stomach rumble, you can get yourself back into that calm, direct focus. Kind of cool, huh? So if you're interested, go to soulmanifesto.com. It's one word, soulmanifesto.com. And then just Go to the seven-day reset. It's right at the top of the page. Seven-day reset to your inner calm. Now, I think we now know we are enough. And I'll tell you something. We are enough because we are from enough. And like I said in the beginning of the show, you are not alone. Every breath, take in a deep breath. You are breathing in energy, spirit, God, whatever it is that gives you that, it has to be. Energy doesn't die. Allow yourself to feel that fullness. And then start looking at you. You are enough, my dear. You are enough, and you have everything you want inside. Remember, love is spirit. And when we live with that love, we're living with spirit. Namaste. And I will see you next week on Magical Moments. This has been Magical Moments with Elena, featuring Elena Chapman. If you missed an episode, download it now on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, CastBox, Deezer, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or your favorite podcast platform. Learn more online at soulmanifesto.com. Podcasts by Federated Media.